Hello and welcome everyone. It is a little past 11 o'clock central, so we will get started. Thank you for tuning in to today's webinar, Engaging Resources for Future Child Care Workers, In-Person and Remote Learning. My name is Emily and I am on the marketing team here at RealityWorks. I will be moderating today's presentation. Presenting today, we have Denise Dubois. Denise is one of our product managers here at RealityWorks and has been with us for a little over 10 years. She is a frequent trainer, presenter, and blogger for all things related to Real Care Baby and other related products. She has over 20 years of marketing, uh, product design, and curriculum writing its experience. She is a fantastic resource for today's webinar. But before we get started, I do wanna cover a couple things. First, today's presentation is being recorded and all attendees will receive a link to that recording, as well as a copy of the PowerPoint slides that Denise does go over. As well, and we also will be sending along a certificate of completion. You will see that email in your inbox within 24 hours after the presentation. We will have time at the end for a Q&A session, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those in the chat area located at the bottom or the Q&A section, and we will cover that at the end. With that being said, I am going to go ahead and pass things over to Denise to get this presentation started. Thank you, Emily. I really appreciate that, and welcome everyone to our session this morning on engaging resources for future child care workers. Um, we're going to kick the session off by uh, talking a little bit about soft skills needed by child care workers. And we're gonna share two scenarios that you can use with your uh, students in your program. So first of all, let's take a look. What, what soft skills are important? And here is a list of 40 essential soft skills that every educator should possess. And you can see skills like teamwork, empathy, patience, critical thinking. These types of skills are used every day on the job. Now we dug into the research and we came upon study after study that showed the importance of soft skills. And here are just a few that stood out that we'd like to share. In 2013, a study by Millennial Branding showed that 61% of managers and 65% of Gen Ys believe that soft skills are the most important ones you can have in the workplace. A poll conducted by CNBC in 2014 revealed that 44% of employers chose soft skills as the biggest gap in the US workforce. And then another research study conducted by Harvard concluded that 85% of job success comes from having well-developed soft and people skills, and only 15% of job success comes from those technical skills. So we know that education has used the power of scenarios for years to help teach key soft skills and technical skills. Now, sometimes your scenario can include the use of a simulator or a hands-on resource as well. Here you see examples of two different scenario-based ways to learn soft skills using simulators or exercises. The first photo is using a real care baby simulator to practice soft skills such as problem solving and patience. You can create any scenario you want and have one student be the child care worker actually learning how to take care of an infant and the other as the parent and then you can have your students switch roles. Now on the right, you can see a workbook that incorporates a wide variety of scenarios to teach and practice all sorts of situations focusing on soft skills. Now, there are many benefits to scenario-based learning, whether it be for those technical skills or soft skills, and here's a few. First of all, it creates sticky learning opportunities or experiences. It will provide your students with something that they are going to remember. Next, it facilitates problem solving in learners. It puts your students in those different new situations that they normally wouldn't be. It also provides guided exploration for your learners. So it gives your students explicit, thoughtful, critical thinking opportunities. It provides a very safe place, safe practice zone to gain proficiency and mastery. So there's no fear or risk of consequences. They can practice. It allows learners to make mistakes and through feedback, reinforce that right approach. Now is the time to practice so your students will know what to do when they come across situations in real life. We want to help them build their uh, toolkit of responses and also approaches. Now, one very simple yet effective way to help your students learn a variety of soft skills are with our pathway specific scenario cards. And we have um, these written by subject matter experts in the field, but each card has a, a separate, uh, separate different uh, scenario on it. Each one focuses on a separate different soft skill. Um, each scenario includes things like points of view to consider, 
and also some key discussion questions. And we have a set of these specifically for childcare careers. And we are gonna share two scenarios from this product that you can use immediately with your students, whether you are teaching in an online um, remote environment or in person. So we know that scenarios are a great way to get your students to interact with each other and the content. So here's a childcare scenario relating specifically to responsibility. Now this would be perfect to use in a facts related or teaching career exploration lessons. Sometimes it's fun to have your students try their acting skills. So here's this, uh, this responsibility scenario. Um, so let's take a look at that right now. One day, a child in your care breaks his arm. Now this was tra traumatic for all involved, but you made it through and the child is doing okay. The center director needs a detailed report on the accident. So she asks you to take the last 20 minutes of your shift to complete the forms for the insurance company and the state licensing department. She'll be asking your coworker or co-teacher Gretchen to fill them out also. Now it's been a tiring day and you want to leave early. Gretchen is also filling out the forms and she's a better writer. So you scribble down some general information and you put it in the center director's box. You get to leave 15 minutes early. Later that night, you receive a text from the center director asking for specific details of the accident. She needs more information because your forms weren't thorough. You text Gretchen and ask her about the report. She tells you that the center director asked her to fill out the actual report documents. She is working on them right now and they are due first thing in the morning. You feel badly because you didn't complete your responsibility and others are needing to pick up your slack. Now you could assign students the different roles in a scenario like this of the person and then have them acted out in front of the class. After that scene is done, you could then ask those key discussion questions to generate a class-wide discussion. Or if you're teaching online or wish to use this online, you could have your students role play the childcare worker and perhaps use a family member or friend to be the other actor. They could record it on their phone, which they love to do anyway. And then they could submit it to you with answers to those discussion questions. Let's take a look at another scenario. This one is gonna be focused on self-confidence. You're attending the monthly staff meeting and everyone's talking as usual. There is a particularly good training topic that you are all discussing. The center director has asked for input on an upcoming center-wide assessment, but most people keep getting off topic. You feel like you have some good thoughts to share because you've been to several trainings on the subject, but you're nervous and shy. You don't want anyone to think that you're trying to score points with the boss, but you are pretty sure that your input could make a difference for most of the classrooms. Again, if you're teaching in a remote environment, you could uh, scan a card like this and share it on your LMS system or you could even create a brief recording where you're reading the scenario and then put those questions out on a discussion forum for your students to weigh in on. So cards like this and scenarios like this are extremely flexible, but there are many different ways to create short scenarios like this. You don't have to do it all yourself. Uh, some suggestions are get industry involved, especially in the local community. Many of you may also use advisory boards that you tap into. Um, already. So talk to local employers in the, in the area that you teach. Tell them that you're creating a class project and you need help coming up with some real world scenarios that involve some different soft skills. Uh, you can also get your students involved. You could ask them to create scenarios based on some of their own life and work experiences. We know that you know, at that age, many students are employed in some of their first jobs and may be willing to share some positive and negative scenarios that they've personally seen or even been a part of. You could talk to your colleagues. More than ever now, schools are tapping into people with um, business and industry experience in order to teach. So you might have some fellow uh, teachers in your school or district that could help you out. Also talk to family members who work in career fields relating to childcare, or if they have young children, there might be scenarios that they've seen as they drop their children off. But if all else fails, you can certainly Google it. Uh, if you keyword search things like work, role-playing, workforce scenarios, workforce conflict scenarios, things of that nature, you will be uh, delighted by what you'll find. We know videos are a great way to get your students actively engaged in things like problem solving and critical thinking. 
Again, like I said before, those keyword searches in YouTube um, bring up dozens of videos. Not all of them are specific to childcare. Some are more uh, general in nature to specific soft skills in different uh, occupational areas, but many are short and can be really engaging. You could show a scenario, stop and discuss as a class, or even turn it into a writing exercise. You can find links that you can upload into your LMS system to deliver online also. So there's just a lot of things out there that, that you could use. Now you've seen how scenarios can be used to teach soft skills for childcare occupations, but scenarios can be equally effective for teaching technical skills, those transferable childcare career skills that your students are going to need. So now we're gonna share three different scenarios that you can use in your program to teach problem solving skills for infant, toddler and preschool teachers that focus on some real world scenarios. Now, this is an infant scenario from our CDA scenario kit and it focuses on advancing physical and intellectual competence. And this is one you could use in your program. For remote learning, you could scan the card and post it on your LMS, or you could, again, create that short video where you read the scenario, you could post the key questions, turning it into a writing exercise, and then do a debrief by providing some of those uh, potential solutions. So it's, it's a very short scenario, but it can really get your students thinking all about, um, in this case, physical and intellectual competence. So you work in the infant classroom, you have a four month old that cries every time you place him or her on his stomach for tummy time. You know tummy time is important, but you dislike seeing him cry. So, and then you can see those key questions and of course the potential solutions that you can share with students as well. Now we have another one that takes it up a notch to uh, toddlers. And this is also from our CDA scenario kit. This one focuses on establishing and maintaining a safe, healthy learning environment. Again, this is one that you could use and try out um, scenario-based problem solving for your class. An 18-month-old toddler is dropped off in the morning in the classroom. As the day progresses, you notice her rubbing her eyes frequently. When you check her eyes, you see they are red and goopy in the corner. She has been here for about two hours and has been playing in various parts of the classroom and with the other children. Again, a very realistic scenario that your students could run into on the job. And now here's our third one, and this is a preschool scenario. Um, it focuses on supporting social and emotional development and providing positive guidance. Uh, scenarios like this, again, are very uh, flexible, can be used in hybrid environments. If you're in that situation, you could use your in-person time to introduce the scenario. Then you could give those key questions and also give them a task of coming up with a potential solution um, to do if, when they go off to their remote learning. And then when they come back to school for in-person class, those solutions can be shared. So again, very, very flexible, but can be very impactful ways to learn. So these three scenarios we just shared um, come from our CDA scenario kit. Now this kit includes ready-made scenarios for all 13 standards students need to master as part of the CDA certification. However, you can see how scenario-based learning can be useful in any learning environment. Now, if you had a kit like ours here, you could save time, but again, you can come up with your own scenarios. Uh, you could um, have your students each come up with a scenario to share and solve, um, but a kit like this could save you, save you some time. So how it works. Um, the program can be used for starting off a lesson with a scenario, or you can even use those scenarios as an assessment at the end of a lesson. Um, we have the workbooks, which can be given to students. So those exercises can, can easily be assigned for either remote learning, um, if that's the model you're currently in, or for in-class. But it doesn't matter if your program is offering a CDE certification or not, because real-world scenarios help your students walk in the shoes of a childcare worker. You're making those realistic decisions that are gonna help them prepare for that occupation. Now, let's take a look at some other free resources for teaching transferable childcare career skills. Um, but before we get into those, those ideas, I wanted to share this access site with you. The link that you see on the screen in front of you gives you access to all of uh, RealityWorks uh, curricula for every single uh, product that we have. And there are many that relate to childcare education, but other family and consumer science areas as well. So when you go to that link, um, you'll see on the right here a screenshot, and there are different categories. And you click on the category of of the topic and 
um, then you click on the product that accompanies that curricula and it will take you out to the lesson plans, but you'll get slide presentations, lecture notes, facilitator instructions, handouts and assessment tools. So there's hundreds and hundreds of pages and free resources that are available to you. And we like to point that out because I'm gonna be referring to um, more of them in my presentation. And this is where you go uh, to get access to all of those lesson plans for free. So the Child Care Center Design Kit is a new kit that we have that um, it's a hands-on design experience for students tasked with designing three different rooms in a child care center. Now we know students learn best practices and by doing, and they're gonna lay out the spaces for an infant room, a toddler room, and a preschool room for optimum learning and student interaction. The kit includes a curriculum that was written by an experienced BAX instructor with strong uh, child care program experience. So the kit includes things like scaled tiles that represent furniture found in child care centers. And then students design their space using a dry erase board that's um, um, gridded out and they're trying to um, design the layout of that ideal child care space for each of those age groups. And there's enough items in the kit for five small groups or five individuals to work on this um, activity simultaneously. Uh, the kit also happens to include a dry erase marker and a mi microfiber cloth so they can draw additional room details such as learning centers. And here's an activity that comes from that child care center design kit curricula. And you have access to this for free. It's an activity where your students are gathering all of the information they need to plan out that ideal classroom. And it's accessed from that curriculum link that I shared. It's under facts. And then you click on child care center design kit. Um, you could use something like this in a remote learning environment where you're giving students some information on room design through videos or through some of the, the information in the lesson then the planning form could be completed at home if that's where they are. You could also uh, post forms like this on an LMS system. And then once students have completed gathering the information, then they, they draw the room um, from their plan using uh, graph paper if you don't have the kit. There are many free graph paper uh, websites that you can download. And I've got one on the screen in front of you here, but there, there are many out there. Now for infant care skills, we know that Real Care Baby is the world's most advanced infant simulator. Educators from around the world, in fact, over 90 countries use this a unique learning aid to teach infant care skills. So it adds meeting and accountability, of course, by programming and tracking all the caregiver behaviors and things like the care events, there's even some mishandle events and actions, um, but it's all tracked. And then with this baby, there are four specific sets of curricula and lesson plans and activities that you can use. And baby is a tool that can be used both in person and for remote learning, because remember it was created so students would have that, um, that stimulation time offsite at home anyway. So it's a great versatile tool uh, for how we're, we're teaching these days. And basic infant care is just one of four curricula that baby customers have access to. And now you all have access to as well at the link that I shared. And I'm highlighting this curricula because this focuses on teaching basic infant caregiving skills and for working with infants on the job. So this curriculum is especially beneficial to CTE programs with a certification in early childhood education. So whether you're a program that leads to that industry recognized childcare credential, or if you're teaching parenting skills, basic infant care uses Real Care Baby in the lessons to provide hands-on practice learning and practicing those infant care skills, such as soothing a crying baby, holding a baby, feeding, burping, rocking, diapering, and so forth. Now here's an example of one way you could use a lesson or lesson content from, from the curricula in a remote environment. But again, anything I'm sharing for remote learning can also be adapted for in-person. And this uh, information is from the holding and feeding lesson in the basic infant care. So the first thing you could do is you could post the discussion questions from the hold me introductory exercise that's available in that lesson. After you do that, you could provide uh, holding, uh, holding and handling an infant demo or practice session for your students. Um, you could share the slide information that's available. And then you could even post some video clips of, of holding 
and handling an infant. Um, there, we have a Real Care Baby app that's free for students that has video clips embedded in it. We also have a free participant care video on our website that you could also point out to students which shows holding and handling a baby. And here's a link that I found all about feeding and holding a newborn that's short and to the point, but is a nice companion to this lesson as well. So there's a lot of video assets you have available to you. And then after that, you could post the bottle feeding and breastfeeding information from the lesson, and then your students would complete that exercise. Again, that's something that can easily be done remotely as well as in person. Similarly, we've taken the bathing and diapering lesson, and there's an activity in it that's called disposable versus cloth. And you learn all about the pros and cons of each type of diaper. And then you could do that, have your students do that activity. And then after that, you could have, uh, you could do a bathing and diapering and infant demo or practice using Real Care Baby if you have one. There's slide information and handouts in the lesson that can be shared. Again, you can point out and, and post video clips um, pointing students to that Real Care Baby app. Uh, show that participant care video, which is only a nine minute video, but it shows all of the care events. Or again, you can use a short YouTube video all about bathing and diapering. And I've got just one example here um, on the screen in front of you. And we do provide post discussion questions in the review activity in that lesson as well. So there's a lot of good, good meat in that lesson that can easily be turned into something you can use remote, hybrid, or in person. Now, two very important skills that childcare workers need to master are infant CPR and how to dislodge an object from a choking infant. Now, we have two simulators that provide hands-on practice in a safe, risk-free environment. And we know that these skills need to be learned through hands-on practice. Um, there's only so much you can do in a remote environment to prepare your students, but there are a few things that you can do. Um, you could use the time with your students in person um, and remote to share important procedural information for infant and choking, infant choking and CPR. And in both curricula that come with these uh, simulators, there are procedures or checklists of steps that you follow to, to accurately do, an, do the procedure, whether it be infant CPR or dislodging a choking object. You can also find links to videos like the one I, the two that I've got shared on the screen above and have your students watch it. And then they could use the steps in the handout. Um, you could uh, scramble them and have them put them in the right order after they watch the video. There are free quiz makers out there and I've got a link to one on the screen where you could create a quiz where students have to put these steps in order. So the steps are, are given to you in the lesson. You could take them, put them in the quiz maker and that's something interactive that your students could do to test their knowledge of that procedure. Now we're gonna share some free resources available with some of our specialty babies. Um, if you're an instructor with access to any of the following babies, we have drug affected, fetal alcohol, preemie, shaken or down syndrome, you actually can create your own demonstration videos and post them online to share with students if you have any that are remote. And of course, if you're in person, if you're in person they make fantastic demonstrators. So with specialty babies, you could actually do uh, multiple mini lessons using each of them recording a demo. For the shaking baby, you could do a short recording where you're demo demonstrating uh, a shaking. You know, what happens to the baby during a shaking? If you have drug affected baby, you can show the baby, um, you turn it on and you could show it where it's shaking because it's going through withdrawal and you can hear those cries that cannot be soothed. With our FAS, fetal alcohol syndrome baby, our preemie baby and Down syndrome babies, those are made so you can point out all of the different physical features shown on those babies. And each of these five babies comes with their own dedicated curriculum and lesson plans and information that you can share on an LMS or even in Google Classroom environments if you are still teaching in that type of environment. Now, in addition to using them for demonstrations, here's an example of how you could take some of the lesson content and use it for a remote uh, learning environment. And in this case, we've taken some of the assets are from, uh, from the shaken baby curriculum. And this is all about child abuse pre prevention. So you could begin by sharing a video, a link to uh, When Babies Cry. And that's a, a brief 13 minute video that's really impactful, but it, it shows 
uh, survivor children of shakings. It talks to parents that have lost children due to a shaking. It talks to medical professionals that explain it. And then next in the lesson, you could do a what happens during a shaking simulation using your shaken baby simulator. You could demonstrate it live if you're in person, or you could prepare a simulation recording. Now, if you prefer not to do that, there's actually one that exists out there on YouTube, and I have the link there that you could show um, that demonstrates that as well. Um, and then you could give your students access to the activity called the Infant Facts Worksheet, that SBF Facts Handout, Ideas for Coping Worksheet, and then My Plan to Manage Frustration. And these four things could be uh, put on an LMS system, uh, more students could do them remotely, or if you're in person, you can hand them out and they could complete them in class. Um, but wait, there's more. We've got a few more ideas for resources that we'd like to share before we wrap up for today. Uh, one thing we have, if you're looking for some lessons on career exploration to augment your child care pathway program, uh, here are several we make available at the link shown above. We have five different lessons. They're free and they're, they're about, you know, could be one, one, a one week unit. And um, one of these five uh, specifically highlights careers relating to infants in the education and human services uh, career cluster. And um, in, this, in this particular lesson that you get at the link I shared in the prior screen, students choose two of the careers identified during a brainstorming session that they're gonna explore further. And they're given a career exploration graphic organizer and then using internet sources or other sources for their research they complete and look up information and compare and contrast um, the two different occupations. And then they're gonna share their research with the class in a short presentation. And we even include a suggested grading rubric for your convenience. So that's just one of the five lessons. So if your students are remote, they could of course do their presentation live on a video platform like Zoom, or they could record it and submit it uh, to you. And then you could compile all of them and share them with the other students. So it would give your students a lot of career exploration and um, uh, make them aware of some uh, career opportunities they might not be aware of. Now, we also have other ongoing webinars that we like to uh, point out to you at realityworks.com backslash webinars. Uh, monthly, we put new webinars out there. Um, you can sign up for them for free like the one you did today. We record all of them, we archive them, and we keep them on our website and you can access them uh, when it's convenient. Most of the time, they run around a uh, half an hour in length, but there are a lot of different uh, child care topics and other facts related content. So keep checking out our webinars. We do add new ones uh, every quarter. Additional other resources, we have a blog and we frequently have uh, new guest writers uh, contributing new content, new ideas, new best practices, uh, new product launch information, all sorts of things out at the blog. So check that out. We are also very active on our social media, things like Facebook and Twitter. We uh, routine, routinely see uh, teachers engaging with each other to share photos, uh, classroom ideas. Sometimes we even see students uh, putting on pictures of some of the things that they're doing with Real Care Baby and so forth. So again, very dynamic places to check out as well. So we've shared lots of different ideas with you during this, this session. At this point, I would like to open it up and to answer any questions anybody might have. Uh, Emma, if you've been watching the chat box, uh, you can let me know if you see any. Yeah, Denise, do you just wanna go over one more time what everybody will be receiving after the webinar? You will receive a link to the, the recording of this presentation. Uh, you'll receive the slide presentation itself. And there is also going to be a handout that has all of the links that will take you to all the resources that were referred to during our presentation as well. And if you've attended, you'll get a certificate of attendance as well. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. I think you covered it pretty good during the um, presentation, Denise. All right. Well, thank you all for spending the time with us today. We hope that you found a few ideas that you'll be able to try in your programs. And whether you're remote still or back in person for fall, we hope that you'll find some of this uh, very valuable. Thank you very much.